Hey folks, in the following video I'm going to quickly show you how to add a new blog post to WordPress. The process for this is very very simple and every time you create a new blog post it will then be displayed as the first entry on your blog page. Blog posts are in reverse chronological order. That being said, it means that the most recent blog post will obviously show first and the oldest blog posts will show last. That is just the WordPress standard functionality. If you need to adjust that and change the layout and positions, you may need a plugin to allow you to adjust it. So first things first, let's log in to WordPress. And to add a new blog post, we will just go to posts. So you can click in the post section. You can click add new from here, or alternatively, when you're at the post section, just hit add new at the top. And there are a few things that you'll want to do. First things first, add the post title. So let's add a title. Again, it's recommended to label this something that is relevant for what the users are going to be viewing. And again, uh, if it is the case where you are posting about, for example, a wedding, maybe you will say the wedding name, uh, the location, and anything else that's relevant for the title. So it is important to make sure that your titles are relevant. Uh, the next option that I would suggest doing is then checking out the categories option. So if you don't know much about categories, uh, these are a really great way to set up hierarchy and structure within WordPress uh, so that people can actually filter through your blog posts. So if you want to set a category, go ahead and choose a category. Again, you can add a new category option as well by clicking add new, typing the category, and then just hit add new category. You can add multiple categories to blog posts, however, it is preferred to use one. Uh, it should be very specific to that blog post. So again, maybe you are a wedding photographer and you do engagements, you do weddings, you do elopements, you can have a different category for each of those. So again, users will of course be able to filter through the different categories and the posts for them. The other option that you have, and this is where you can add more items, is tags. And again, tags are another way to create more structure to your posts for filtering. And you can have multiple tags per blog post. So again, these are like the micro, I would call them sort of like micro categories for your posts. And again, it just gives much, much further depth to your blog posts. So maybe someone would like to see a wedding, but they would like to see a wedding in the location, a style of wedding. This could be what you use your tags for. So in here we could say a boho wedding, uh, Miami, for example, it could be uh, just anything related to tags. So again, of course, these should be relevant. You can add them. Uh, there isn't much difference in terms of SEO value. Actually, adding them uh, does not really create much in terms of any SEO value, but user experience is something that is important for Google. So of course, creating and adding tags and categories will hopefully enhance some SEO by creating a better user flow. The next thing that you may want to add, uh, and again, this could be theme dependent, is a sidebar. So if you do want a sidebar, you can select a sidebar and then choose the sidebar area that you would like to use for that. In my case, I'm going to leave that. Then you should set a featured image. Uh, the featured image will be used for the covers if your theme has that, of course. Um, so yes, go ahead and upload your featured image and just select one that's relevant. Next, you will want to then add the content. Now this is very simple. You can hit add media uh, and that will allow you to upload blog posts. So if you would like to add posts, you can drag and drop those from your desktop. For example, if you have images, just throw those in there as well. So maybe I want to upload this image uh, or alternatively, if you have uploaded the items to your media library, you can select the items from here as well and insert those into the post. Just a note, whenever you are adding, uh, there is an option for images, for alignment, for where it links to. Maybe you want to link it to a specific URL, for example. You can do so as well here. And you can choose the size, thumbnail, medium, large, and full size. I always set mine to full size um, and then insert them in the post. Uh, if they are inserting as a smaller size, you can actually edit them. I click edit and then choose the sizing. If you want it to, to set an option, as automatic, what I always suggest doing is first add one single image, then set the size. So in this case, uh, if I choose full size and insert this into the post, all other images after this will automatically have full size as the default value. So again, makes it much, much easier for inserting multiple images to the post at the correct size. 
Now for text options, there are a few different things you can see up here. So you'll see that we have a WYSIWYG uh, editor here. So I can add uh, text and details. And you can do a number of things here uh, for these sites. So you can bold text. So highlight any piece of text. You can use the bold tag, italics. You can add bullet lists, numbered lists. You can add quotes. You can set the alignment of the text as well. You can add links if you click the insert hyperlink option and put in a URL here. And of course, if you hit the options tab, you can make it open in a new tab as well. So, you know, I could click add a, new, a link here, open a new tab. Uh, you also have some options for heading, uh, read more. Um, and if you have plugins added, you may have additional functionality available there also. You'll also see that there is options for uh, text uh, styling. So again, it could be for the hierarchy. Maybe you want to add the H1 title, uh, you know, H2 title, just to create some structure, because that is, of course, very useful for uh, SEO purposes if you structure your content and it makes it much easier for users to use. You can, of course, choose styles for colors. You know, you could choose uh, red, for example, for this specific piece of text. Just know that that will always overwrite any global settings you have. So if you have some strange text uh, formatted on your website, it's most likely because you've chosen some options in here, and that will, of course, overwrite any global settings that you have. So you do have a number of options, folks. You can just go ahead and check through those. If you really want to learn more about that, you can read the WordPress codex, and it explains this in much, much more detail. Now, whenever you're publishing your posts, you have a few options. First things first, you can click preview and preview how that looks. That will give you an overview of how the post looks before you go ahead and publish it to your viewers, just to make sure that the formatting is correct and it's a good way just to preview your post. So yours may be different style than mine. Uh, this is theme specific, uh, this exact style. But again, you can see here we have uh, the uh, category at the top, the title, the date. Of course, it will be of course very theme specific. We have the text and details that have added, all the images that were inserted into the post as well. Uh, of course, there are comments and sharing options. Again, this may be theme specific. And in our case, we have also links to different types of blog posts. Now, you will also see that there's options for visibility. Again, you can choose public. You can choose password protected uh, if you would like that to be only shown to uh, specific people with a password and private. Uh, that is useful if you uh, have an editor um, or you only want someone that is an admin uh, or an editor to view this blog post. Uh, use private. So in most cases, you will use public. You have options then for publishing. So right now, it's it's by default, it's set to publish immediately. Uh, you can click edit and set a, a date in the future. So if you've created various blog posts and you want to schedule those, maybe you're going on holiday, maybe you just want to make sure that you have 10 blog posts coming out in the next 10 weeks, you can just go ahead, create them all, and then schedule the date for that as well. And then that will automatically schedule those whenever you have assigned it. So if I set for the 5th of May, for example, and I hit publish, this will actually schedule it for the 23rd at the specific time and date. And then when it comes to that time, it will of course publish the post and it will be available to your users. Now, in my case, I'm just gonna publish this just so you can see, let's choose today. So we're going to publish it uh, right now. So, and today's date, so April. I'm just gonna hit update. And that should automatically publish this blog post. And then with that, it will then show up on your blog page. So if we were to log back over to our blog page, we can now see, once I refresh it, that we have a new blog post listed here. Again, setting up the blog page will be different for different uh, theme providers. In our case, we have a block that allows you to do so, and of course, style it. So again, refer to your documentation for how to set up the blog page specifically. This tutorial will just cover the different options for the blog posts. So that's it, folks. Go ahead, start adding your new blog posts, and you can start creating some awesome content for your users.